Hey there. Uh, a viewer asked me to go through the mathematics uh, in a book called, uh, what's the title? Uh, Optimal Mean Reversion Trading. I'll put a link to the, uh, the book, uh, title and authors, either in the notebook, uh, Jupyter Notebook, or in the video description. So I want to talk over the details of these calculations, and the authors in the book go over, uh, they derive an analytical expression for, for the parameters they're trying to sell for. But I'm also going to show how to do it with a computer numerically, uh, because if you're like me and you have to do 50 pages of algebra, you're probably going to make a mistake somewhere along the line, and it just might be easier to do uh, via computer. So I'll show their solutions, and I'll show how to do it uh, numerically as well. Now, the authors are assuming that the stock behavior, the pairs, uh, pairs trade price, uh, follows what's known as an ornstein ullenbeck process. So I'm going to go over that, but at first I'm going to go over the same idea in the context of the normal distribution because um, you can derive these pretty easily for the normal distribution so you can easily check your work algebraically as well as numerically. So this is a parameter estimation technique known as maximum likelihood estimation and we're going to do it for both the normal distribution first and then uh, ornstein ullenbeck and I'm just going to do the uh, parameter estimation here, and then in part two or a subsequent video, I'm basically going to try to reproduce the results that the authors get in their paper looking at a pairs trade between uh, the gold miners ETF and uh, GLD, which is a gold uh, a ETF which follows the price of gold. Okay, so having said all that, let's get to it. Okay, as far as imports uh, go, the only kind of fancy thing we're going to need is this SciPy minimize uh, function, and I'm also going to pull in the um, the the uh, normal distribution from the stats package. Uh, I'll go over this text in a bit, but we're going to start here with the normal distribution, and let's plot this out for. Let's have a normal distribution centered on I don't know mu is equal to two, and let's do a standard deviation sigma if I could spell it right, sigma of, of 3, and let's just plot this out. So x is going to be equal to, let's go from uh, minus 10 to 13, and so our y values are going to be the normal uh, distribution corresponding to those uh, x values with mu and sigma. So that's just going to be norm.pdf x, and we're going to set the uh, location, which is going to be equal to mu, and the scale, and I don't know why they use these uh, names, but the scale is equal to sigma. So the location is basically the, the average of the distribution and, sig and the scale is how wide it is or the standard deviation. So let's just plot those out now. So let's go plt.plot. Uh, we'll do x and y and make it a black line. And let's turn on, um, where did my cursor go? Let's put the grid on just because I like it. plt.plot, um, plt.grid, sorry, true. And now let's suppose we have a point, let's call it x1, and we'll put it at x is equal to 7, I guess. So actually, let's come up here and do it. So x1 is equal to 7, and let's just plot it on the uh, x-axis just so that we can visualize it. So plt.plot, plot, 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 x1, comma, let's put it at 0, and we'll make it a uh, blue circle. So this point here, so we have this point uh, at x is equal to 7. So let's go back to the text up here. So the likelihood, and I'm going to denote that by um, a script L here, is basically the distribution function evaluated at that point um, x sub 1, or x, you know, in general it's just some generic x sub i. But um, yeah, it's the distribution function evaluated at that x sub i for the parameters sigma and beta. So we can come up here and just say, what's the likelihood of, of that? So that's just going to be equal to, uh, all we have to do is plug in x1 into our distribution. So let's print um, norm.pdf x1. I have a typo there already. Uh, loc is equal to mu. Scale is equal to sigma, and let's get rid of that. So before I run the cell, we should be able to figure it out, just kind of eyeballing it. We should get a value of about what? Between point, maybe 0.35. So let's just run this to see. 0 0.033. Uh, yeah, I meant there's an extra zero here. So 0 0.033. So cool. And the same thing would hold for a different point. If we were to just choose another point, uh, x2 is equal to... Um, let's just go minus one and we'll plot that again just so we can 
visualize it, paste and make this X2. So there we are here. Um, we should get a value of about what? 0 0.06. So let's just copy this line again. And I need a uh, print. And let's change this to X2. And we should get a value of about 0 0.06, hopefully. And indeed we do. Uh, 0 0.08. What did I say originally if we come up here? Yeah, about 0 0.08. So cool. That's pretty obvious. Um, let me do this, in fact. I'm going to call this little L1 and little L2. So this will be L1 is equal to that. L2 is equal to that. And I'm just going to print these out. So print L1, print L2. So these are the likelihoods of these two individual events. But what's the combined likelihood? What's the likelihood of X1 and X2? So uh, if we come up here, we say it's just basically the product of those two individual likelihoods. And it's kind of the same idea of like a coin toss being 50-50, 50% heads. What's the uh, probability of two heads? Well, it's one half times one half or a quarter. So the likelihood is just the product of those two values. So let's just come down here and just calculate it just for the hell of it. Print L1 times L2. So that would be the combined likelihood. And that's a smaller number given that these two numbers are, are small to begin with. And the more numbers you have here, the smaller they're, they're going to tend to be since these these um, this distribution is always fairly high. The highest value is like 0 0.1, what, 0 0.13. So, you know, the uh, product of a bunch of small numbers is a small number. So now our problem is basically to just reverse this. So we're going to know the points X1 and, you know, X up to I points or N points. Say you have a whole bunch of points from 1 to N. But we do not know the mu or sigma of the distribution. So how are we going to solve that problem? How are we going to pull mu and sigma out of that? So uh, as the name kind of implies here, what we're going to do is choose the values of mu and theta that maximize this likelihood here. Well, actually, we're going to do something slightly different. Um, this is basically a calculus problem, right? To find the maximum of a function, you take the derivative, set it to equal to zero, and find the value of the parameter that, that uh, sets that function equal to zero. Um, Taking a derivative of this would be a pain because of a product. This is a product of many terms, so you're going to have tons and tons of product rules. Um, also, as you've seen down here, these numbers can get very, very small. So what we're going to actually do is take the log of this, and that does not really change the position of the maximum, but it does make it a lot easier. Because if you remember from, I don't know when you do this, high school math, the log of a product is the sum of the individual logs. So that just simplifies this. So we don't have to do any sort of uh, product rules and calculus. We could just do a term by term differentiation. So I'm going to come down here and just type out what we're going to do. I'm actually not going to solve it because you can find this dozens and dozens, dozens and dozens of places online. And I just don't want to waste time doing it. So let me uh, just write out exactly what we're going to do. So explicitly written out, this is what we're going to do here. We're taking the derivative of the log likelihood with, with respect to both mu and sigma and setting those equal to zero and then solving for mu and sigma. And if you do that, the result is pretty simple. The optimal mu, and the book uses this mu star notation and sigma star to be the optimal uh, mu. That's just equal to basically, this is just the, uh, it's not basically the sample average. It is the sample average. So the sample mean is just uh, our optimal mu. And likewise, our optimal sigma is just the sample standard deviation. Easy. So um, I'm going to generate a whole bunch of data with um, these known mu's and sigma's down here. And we're just going to plug it into uh, these formulas. And hopefully we'll get back numbers close to uh, 2 and 3. And then I want to show um, if for some reason you're not able to solve these types of problems, and in some real world, maybe you have your own statistical distribution that uh, you've deter determined empirically that's not normal or whatever, and you can't, you can't kind of do a problem like this, how you would do this numerically. So let's come down here and generate some more data. So I'm going to set a uh, constant random seed so that every time we run, we, we run this cell, we get the same number. 
I'm going to choose an arbitrary number of points. Let's just do, I don't know, let's do 100 and generate some data. So I'm going to call this data x and I'm going to use the uh, normal sampling function from SciPy again with um, the, the, the center of the distribution at mu and sigma uh, scale being set to sigma and the number of points of course being n and let's just plot these out to see what they look like so plot x uh, plt.plot and what did I oh seed okay so we just have a bunch of random data here and now let's just print out the um, the, the mean and standard deviation of this distribution. And hopefully we should get numbers close to uh, two and three. So for the time being, let's get rid of the plot and let's come down here and go print um, np.mean x, print np.std x. So we get we get reasonably close with like 2.1 ish uh, for the mean and a little over three so 3.4 ish for the standard deviation so now let's kind of code this up in a way where we could um, solve this problem numerically assuming we did not know that these were the optimal values and hopefully we'll get something close to these um, numbers here so we're going to actually not use the max there is no maximize function in scipy but there is a minimize function so we've done this before what to find the maximum you find the negative of the minimum. So you write a function that calculates the um, the um, the log of the likelihood function, and then you just return the negative value of that. So let's come down here and write a function called, um, uh, let's do it in a cell above this one here. So let's insert a cell, and we'll create a function called, oops, log, likelihood and it's going to take um, our parameters need to come in our mu and sigma parameters need to come in as a vector or a list so I'm going to call that P and our raw data that's just our X values and to make the code kind of easier to follow I'm going to say mu is equal to P 0 and sigma is equal to P 1 so when we pass this in we have to pass in the uh, the, the the value of mu is going to be our first value of this vector, sigma the second value. And now let's do, uh, let's use L for the likelihood or log likelihood. So the likelihood is just going to be our, um, our data run through the normal distribution. So that's, that's this up here. And now we need to take the log of it and then the sum of it. So where are we? So let's just do np.log and then lastly np.sum and remember we need to return the negative of this because we're going to actually find the minimum so since this gives the maximum we need to negate it to get the minimum. So we're good to go here. I'm also going to write a function that kind of puts a constraint um, on sigma for our minimization routine. Uh, sigma has to be a positive value. It has to be greater than zero, in fact. And we've done this before. You have to write a function called uh, constraint. So what well, doesn't have to be called constraint. It can be called anything you want. Uh, we're going to have our vector is P, a vector of parameters. And the only one we care about is sigma which is equal to P1. And the way this function is written, if I could actually type correctly, uh, as you return the values that are going to be greater than zero, whatever this function returns is going to be forced to be greater than zero. So all we have to do is return sigma out of here. So return sigma. Does all of this run? It would run better if I could type. That should be a comma. So far, so good. So let's come down here and actually call the uh, minimize function. Uh, we need to create some constraints, a, a dictionary of constraints that basically tells, tells the solver that we're doing an inequality here and that our function is called constraint. So now we just call minimize. 
our function that we want to minimize is log likelihood. Um, let us just assume, I'm going to, this also requires our initial guesses, which I'm going to call P0. But I'm going to define it out here just so we can change it if need be. So P0 is equal to um, our mean, and I don't know the mean, so I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to assume the standard deviation is equal to 1. So now we need to pass in, this also requires the args, and that's going to be our x values. Uh, x's might actually need to be a passed in as a tuple, so I'm just going to make it a tuple. Um, and then our constraints. So constraints, if I could type, constraints is equal to cons. That should do it. And as you can see, we get the exact same things that we got up here. Awesome. And in the interest of time, what I'm going to do is split this video in half. So this was the normal distribution, and this should go live. I plan on it going live August 9th, which I think is a Monday. Um, I'm going to do the Ornstein Ullenbeck, um, record that right now. But um, that'll be, that will be added to this notebook, and it will probably go live like two days later, just in the interest of time. So until uh, Wednesday, see you later.